They're running a temporal pincer movement. Uh, uh, what? The pincer movement. But not in space, in time. Half his team moves forward through the event, he monitors them and then attacks at the end moving backwards. Knowing everything. Brilliant. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Disclaimer, so this is part of the director project where myself and a bunch of other video essays come together to talk about a popular director every month, so check them out kids. Alright, before we begin, it's important to establish and contextualise Christopher Nolan's signature as an auteur. I know that's a very pretentious word. Because his obsession is examining how cinema can uniquely communicate experience. Memento is a story that's played in reverse order. Uh, seen there and then meet towards the end of the film. The prestige is often understood as a metaphor for how film itself is a magic trick that controls where you look. Dunkirk presents several perspectives at the same time, and Inception is a metaphor for how a film is assembled and how it plants an idea into the audience's mind. Therefore, for the usual audiences, it can get kind of bloody confusing because not only is the editing non-linear, but the films themselves are designed to address the audience in very unconventional, artsy-fartsy ways. And my solution to telling the story subjectively was to deny the audience the same information that the protagonist is denied. Tenet is a massive leap in the style because, as he said himself, What we did with Inception for the heist genre is really what Tenet attempts to bring to the, the spy movie genre. Therefore, once again, he's interested in using a familiar genre to make the audience participate in a metaphor for what film can do. Tenet is a confusing film, so I must very clearly state that the purpose of this essay is not to provide a scene-by-scene -scene explanation, instead I want to examine how it narratively trains the audience to look at cinema differently, and how we should value time as an edited experience differently too. Plus, I'm too dumb for science. As a simple narrative, and when I mean simple narrative, I actually mean selecting events based on their importance from the monomyth. <laughs> Act 1, the protagonist called the uh, protagonist, is a CIA dude on an undercover mission and he gets saved by a mystery dude who catches a bullet. Thematically, this functions as the call to action because the audience, like the protagonist, is metaphorically summoned into a new world beyond what was previously understood. Paraphrased from page 48. How about now? Inverted. Act 2, the protagonist joins Tenet, a time travel organisation, and infiltrates Kenneth Branagh's gang in order to get his hands on time travelling technology from the future. The film is way more serious than I'm making it out. I ordered my hot sauce an hour ago. Subsequently, within this act, the most important actions, or action, technically is when the protagonist and Neo fight a mystery dude in an all-black armour who's moving in reverse time. As the audience, we're initially like, yeah, protagonist, punch him in the dick! <laughs> However, later on, the protagonist and Neo must save Kat by going through inversion, and their past selves are unavoidably in their way. So all of a sudden, we see the same fight scene, but through his eyes. And we're like, no, don't get punched in the dick! This loop is designed to be the ultimate boon, where the hero achieves their ultimate goal. Paraphrased from page 148. Because the protagonist's personal mission, is separate from Kenneth Branagh, was to understand inversion. Does he still trust her? He thinks she's dead. But he used to. You know, I've started looking at the world in a new way. Not only does he do it with his ambitious time travel plan, but as the audience, we also become wiser and have renewed understanding of what happened before and how all the characters think. Any other stupid questions? In Act 3, the protagonist Neo, Cat, and Kickass team up to stop Kenneth Branagh because he's planning to destroy the world. There are many little time travel loops here, but the most emotionally important one in the overall structure is when Neo leaves and discloses his plan to go back and ensure everything in the film happens, happens. Just save the world. Can't leave anything to chance. Therefore, the entire film is a loop, since he was the dude who saved the protagonist at the very start, unlocked the door and took a bullet from him, in fact. By knowing this, the protagonist now knows this isn't the end, only the beginning. Hey, you never did tell me who recruited you, Neo. I only guessed by now. You did! This is the freedom to live, which is the ability to not regret or anticipate the past or the future, but to simply live in the moment. I told you you'd have to start looking differently at the world. 
Consequently, Tenet is a story about how experiences with people shape our identities as individuals. The protagonist becomes the mastermind who orchestrated the entire thing due to his experiences with Neil, Kat learns to stick up to Kenneth Branagh through experiences with the protagonist, and as the audience, we know what's going on through our experiences with everyone. Control operations to temporal pizza. Boom! Yours! Tenet is designed to break the fourth wall, and not in terms of haha the characters know they're in a film, but in terms of re-watching the film itself as part of the time travel. The title is a palindrome and so is the structure of the story because it flows in reverse. Neo goes back in time to save the protagonist from the start, while the protagonist at the end becomes the man who sends Neo back in time in the first place. I realized I wasn't working for you, we've both been working for me. I'm the protagonist. So if you watch it back to back as a five hour long film, it would kind of flow perfectly. Nolan even puts his signature title card, which normally appears in the credits, at the beginning to make it flow. As a result, the film has more in common with a French New Wave film like Jean-Luc Godard's Abu de Sou than, I don't know, Back to the Future or something. For anyone who didn't do A-level film studies, Abu de Sou is a French film about a French dude trying to be an American gangster but fails because of the lack of free will from the film itself. The ending is him literally running in a dragged out scene trying to avoid his death but can't because it's what's demanded of him as a character. None of this is said, it's felt because it's communicated from characteristics that are only special to cinema like the editing, the noticeably weird pacing, like the way scenes can go longer or shorter than expected. The characters of Tenet follows a similar logic, their existential limits are literally determined by what will happen to them. As Neo said, I'll see you at the beginning, friend. We know he'll die, he knows he'll die, the protagonists know he'll die, but everyone including the audience can find solace in knowing that the meaning of all of this and the characters' lives or in how we can literally re-experience it by re-watching the film. You have a future in the past. Years ago for me, years from now for you. You've known me for years. Probably not on HBO Max, because Nolan hates it. Therefore, the knowledge the viewer gains after the first viewing is something that becomes deeply important to the film's themes and message, because like the character arc of the protagonist, we, as the audience, require re-experiencing the same events to think differently. As a result, where Nolan's films were previously philosophical examinations of how cinema can portray reality, like did Cobb wake up or not in Inception, Tenet is in contrast a mechanical examination for the reason that it explores how new knowledge from an audience can create a completely new experience. So we're the time travelers. In other words, Nolan has used cinema to create a puzzle where the fun isn't in passively watching it, like pig eating slop, but in solving it. What's happened's happened. Which is an expression of faith in the mechanics of the world. It's not an excuse to do nothing. Faith? Call it what you want. What do you call it? Reality. Uh, in conclusion, I liked it. <laughs> Sather wants to see you. Okay. Now. Uh, he wants to see me without pants?